Is it just me, or does anyone else wish he'd just disappear? Lila's biting words cut through the tense dinner silence like a knife. I froze, fork halfway to my mouth, as my world started unraveling around me. Across the table, Alex shifted uncomfortably, avoiding eye contact with his sister or me. I couldn't blame him. The animosity radiating off Lila was palpable. Don't say that, I said automatically, though my voice lacked conviction. A part of me understood her resentment towards her father, towards my husband, Ethan. Lila scoffed and pushed away her half-eaten dinner. Why not? It's true. He's never around anyway. His own kids are like strangers to him. That's enough, I said, more firmly this time. I tried to catch Alex's eye, hoping for some support, but he was staring resolutely at his plate. An uncomfortable silence settled over the table. The ticking of the kitchen clock suddenly seemed deafening. I struggled to remember the last time we'd had a pleasant family dinner, one where Ethan was actually present instead of working late at the office. Again. I thought back to when Ethan and I first married. He'd been so charming, so attentive, the successful, handsome executive who could have had his pick of women. Yet, he'd chosen me, a shy grade school teacher from a modest background. When I became pregnant with Lila, shortly after the wedding, we'd agreed I would leave my job to focus on raising our children. Ethan's career was taking off, and he wanted me available for the kids. I'd been happy to do it at the time. It felt comfortable, traditional even, to embrace my role as a homemaker and mother. But lately, I couldn't shake the feeling that I'd given up too much. With the kids in high school now, the house felt claustrophobic and isolating. I missed the purpose and fulfillment of my career, the intellectual stimulation of fellow teachers. Most days it was just me, rattling around in this big empty house while Ethan threw himself into his work a work that seemed to benefit everyone but his own family. The shrill ring of Ethan's cell phone broke the heavy silence. He glanced at the caller ID. I need to take this. Excuse me. His tone was clipped, devoid of any warmth, as he pushed back from the table and headed for his home office. Just another family dinner cut short. I moved robotically around the kitchen, packing up the uneaten food and wiping down the counters. As I placed Ethan's plate in the fridge, resentment simmered within me. I was tired of making excuses for him, explaining away his detachment from me and the kids, his constant business trips and office emergencies. Muffled voices drifted in from Ethan's office. He must have forgotten to fully close the door in his haste to take the call. I crept closer, wondering if I could discern who he was speaking with so urgently. Oh, really? Paris? That sounds amazing. Ethan's voice sounded lighter, more enthusiastic. I frowned. As far as I knew, he had no upcoming trips to Paris planned. Don't worry about her. Cora has no clue about us. I froze. Us? My hands started shaking. It's under control, Ethan continued confidently. She buys every excuse I give her. Blames herself for being too needy or paranoid. It's pathetic. His cold, dismissive words felt like a slap in the face. Was this how he truly saw me? A foolish, oblivious housewife too weak to question his lies? Humiliation and anger battled within me. How long had he been deceiving me? How many business trips had he actually spent with someone else, lavishing affection and attention he denied his own family? I thought of the many nights I'd spent alone, waiting anxiously for his return. The endless efforts to keep things running smoothly at home, so he had no cause for complaint. My sacrificed career and dreams, all for this sham of a marriage. No more. I refused to be a passive victim in my own life. If Ethan thought he could continue this charade, he was in for a rude awakening. I returned to the kitchen, lips pressed in a determined line. Lila and Alex were clearing their dishes, avoiding conversation. I steeled myself with a deep breath. How would you two feel about a trip? I asked. Just the three of us. Their eyes widened in surprise. I continued, we could use a vacation. Get away for a bit. I think it would do us some good. Lila recovered first. Seriously, Mom? That sounds great. Can we go somewhere fun like the beach? Alex nodded eagerly. I'm in if we can do some surfing. I smiled, even as my stomach churned with anxiety. Then it settled. I'll look at some options tonight. We could all use some distance from Ethan. Time away to clear our heads and for me to plan my next steps. The girl's weekend idea I'd been mulling suddenly crystallized into something more purposeful, more permanent. I had been blind to Ethan's true nature for too long. 
I wouldn't ignore the cracks forming in our family, even if confronting them head-on terrified me. Whatever it took, I would find the truth about Ethan's activities and secrets. I owed that much to myself and our kids. The time had come to take control of my life and protect my children at all costs. Ethan may not see me as a threat, but that was about to change. The next morning, I woke with determination coursing through my veins, no more passive acceptance of Ethan's lies. Today, I would confront him and demand the truth. I waited until the kids left for school, then strode to Ethan's home office. He sat at his desk, focused intently on his computer screen, probably chatting with his mistress. The thought made bile rise in my throat. We need to talk, I said sharply. Now. Ethan's fingers stilled on the keyboard. He turned and regarded me coolly. What's this about, Cora? I crossed my arms. I think you know. The late nights at the office. The last-minute business trips. When does it end? Ethan's expression hardened. I told you my position requires long hours and travel, but I guess that explanation isn't good enough anymore. He practically spat the words. You're damn right it's not good enough, I shot back. Do you think I'm an idiot? That I don't notice how distant and cold you've become? How you're never around for this family? Never around? Ethan slammed his fist on the desk. I bust my ass to provide for you and the kids, to give you this cushy lifestyle, but all I get in return is nagging and accusations. I flinched at the fury in his voice, but stood my ground. We don't want your money, Ethan. We need a husband and father who's actually present in our lives, who gives a damn about us. Isn't that why I gave up my career? Ethan sneered. Please. Your little teaching job was insignificant. I'm the one out there making real contributions. But you don't appreciate any of it. You're too paranoid, too insecure. His cruel words sliced through me. He was trying to flip the script, make this somehow my fault. I thought of him mocking my cluelessness on the phone last night and set my jaw. Not this time. You can try to blame me all you want, I said coldly. But I know about her, Ethan. It was a shot in the dark, but his face instantly drained of color. Her? What are you talking about? He tried to scoff dismissively. Have you completely lost your mind? I heard you on the phone, I pushed on, laughing about your weekend getaway to Paris with her, calling me pathetic for believing your lies. Ethan paled further but quickly composed himself. You're clearly confused, he said with eerie calmness. I went to Paris for work. You're letting your imagination run away with you. Don't you dare lie to me again, I exploded. I know what I heard. Just admit it already. For a long moment, we just stared at each other, the air thick with tension. Then Ethan sighed and ran a hand over his face. His voice turned icy. Fine, Cora. You want the truth? I have been seeing another woman. Have for over a year now, because clearly I wasn't getting what I needed here. His casual confession landed like a gut punch. I reeled, grasping the edge of his desk to steady myself. Over a year? How had I not realized sooner? How could you? I finally choked out. We're married. We have children. Ethan shrugged. I got bored. It happens. But I took care of my needs discreetly so as not to upset you. I'd say I did you a favor. Red-hot rage flooded through me. I dug my fingernails into my palms and fought to keep my voice steady. Get out, I said thickly. I want you out of this house today. Ethan stood slowly, straightening his expensive tie and cufflinks. With pleasure. I'll be at the Four Seasons until I find an apartment. He moved toward the door, but then paused. One more thing. You can't prove anything. So don't bother trying to drag my name through the mud. You'll only humiliate yourself. He held my gaze. This will stay our little secret. Understood? Without waiting for a response, he brushed past me and out of the room, I stood frozen, listening to his fading footsteps, overwhelmed by shock and fury. How dare he think he could threaten me into silence, that I would meekly accept his betrayal while he carried on his sordid double life. No, I refused to let him destroy our family and escape unscathed. I would find proof of his affairs and deceit. I would take him for everything he was worth. Ethan had awoken a wrath inside of me I'd never known existed and I would channel every ounce of it to ensure he paid for his sins. Mom, what's going on? Alex's worried voice greeted me as soon as I picked him up from school. Dad's stuff is gone. Did you guys have a fight? I gripped the steering wheel tightly. There was no point lying to them now. We did fight, I said carefully. Your father has been unfaithful to our marriage, 
He's going to be staying somewhere else for a while. Alex's mouth dropped open in shock. Lila let out a harsh laugh from the back seat. I knew it. I told you he was cheating. Her eyes blazed with vindication. I held up a hand. Look, I know you're upset. I am too. But right now, we need to stick together as a family. My mind raced as I drove. I'd already called a divorce lawyer and opened a separate bank account, transferring half of our savings into it. A good start, but not, not enough. Not if I wanted to take Ethan down and rebuild a stable life for the kids. I thought of the photos displayed prominently around our house. Ethan grinning at charity galas, posing with important clients, accepting his promotion to partner at his law firm. He looked every inch the successful family man. But it was all a facade. There had to be more definitive proof of his duplicity. Something to confirm the mistress, the lavish gifts likely funded by our family's money. If I could uncover hard evidence, I'd have leverage for a favorable divorce settlement. But how? Ethan was careful about covering his tracks, and he had resources I lacked. He'd sworn his lawyers would demolish me if I tried anything. Unless? What if we hired someone? I mused aloud. A private investigator. Lila's eyebrows shot up, while Alex looked uncertain. Isn't that expensive, Mom? Don't worry about the money, I said firmly. This was something I needed to do, for their futures and mine. They'll find anything there is to find, Lila said supportively. Emails, bank statements, the whole deal. Alex still seemed hesitant, so I softened my tone. I know this feels extreme, but we can't blindly trust your dad anymore. We need to know exactly what we're dealing with before I confront him about a divorce. Alex's shoulders slumped. I get it, Mom, I'm just processing. He paused. Do what you need to do. I squeezed his hand, grateful for his maturity, even as my heart ached for his lost innocence. We'd all been forced to grow up too fast. Over the next few days, I discreetly interviewed PIs, assessing their experience with cases like mine. Most were sympathetic but clear. Catching someone like Ethan would be incredibly difficult. Still, a few seemed up for the challenge. In the end, I chose a Miss Carter. She was a petite, unassuming woman, but her steely eyes told me she was not to be underestimated. She assured me if there was evidence to find, she would find it. And find it she did. Barely a week later, Miss Carter presented me with a file stuffed with damning photos and financial records. They showed Ethan whining and dining a beautiful young woman at the most exclusive restaurants and clubs, lavishing her with expensive jewelry and a luxury sports car, paid for with money diverted from our accounts. I flipped through the photos with trembling hands, a mix of vindication and anguish coursing through me. Here was irrefutable proof of his duplicity and manipulation. I could destroy his polished public image with this file, force him to pay what he owed us. Miss Carter cleared her throat gently. I know this is difficult, but you have power now. Don't let him bully you into backing down. She held my gaze. Fight for you and your kids, Miss Collins. Make him pay. A deep resolve flowed through me, stealing my spine. She was right. The time for being a passive victim was over. If Ethan wanted to fight dirty, I would rise to the occasion. No more hiding the ugly truth to protect his reputation or mine. I thanked Miss Carter profusely, not caring that the bill wiped out half my personal savings. This was worth every penny. Armed with the damning file, I got to work. It was time to set the divorce proceedings in motion. Time to harness this rage and pain into actions that would reshape my future. On my terms this time, not Ethan's. Let him underestimate me at his own peril. I sat rigidly on the sofa, the manila folder containing Ethan's misdeeds clenched tightly in my lap. He would arrive any minute, expecting this to be just another discussion about divorce proceedings. He had no idea of the storm about to crash down around him. My anxiety mounted as the clock ticked later. Just as I began contemplating calling him, the front door finally swung open. Ethan strode in, looking irritated. Well, what was so urgent that I had to rush over here? He asked impatiently. I stood slowly, folder in hand. I think you know. Sit. Ethan's eyes darted to the folder, but he maintained his nonchalant facade. If this is about the settlement, my lawyer already told you. Sit. Down. My voice lashed out like a whip. Ethan blinked in surprise but sank into the armchair facing me. I took a steadying breath. I'm going to make this very simple, I said, eerily calm. You have a choice. Agree to a divorce settlement that fairly compensates me and the children, 
or I go public with this. I dropped the folder on the coffee table between us. Crime scene photos splayed out, Ethan and the mistress at a steakhouse. Embracing in a hotel lobby, her driving off in a shiny new sports car. Ethan stared at them, all pretense gone. His face went scarlet. You deceitful bitch, he hissed through gritted teeth. I told you not to mess with things you don't understand. I leaned forward. Oh, I understand perfectly now. I know about the diverted money, the lavish gifts you bought her using our savings. My voice shook with rage I could no longer contain. That money was mine, Ethan exploded. I earned it through my work, not you. What have you contributed lately besides nagging and suspicion? The accusation stung, but I stood firm. That money belonged to our family. Instead, you blew it on her without a second thought. And then you tried to gaslight me into thinking it was all in my head. Ethan glared at me. Gaslight you? I've provided for you since the day we married. Given you and the kids this luxurious lifestyle out of the goodness of my heart. This is the thanks I get? The goodness of your heart? Don't make me laugh, I scoffed. You've provided nothing but deception. But now it's over. It's all here in black and white. I jabbed my finger at the photos. You have two options. Agree to an equitable divorce settlement, or I send this to your firm, your family, and every media outlet in town. Ethan's confident facade finally cracked. Fear flashed in his eyes. He raked a hand through his hair, chest heaving. You wouldn't dare, he said through gritted teeth. But uncertainty tinged his voice. I gave a cold, mirthless smile. Try me. My only concern now is getting what I'm owed after so many years of loyalty and sacrifice. Do right by me and the kids, and your reputation stays intact. Call my bluff, and I'll bring your perfect world crashing down around you. My heart pounded as we stared at each other. After an eternity, Ethan collapsed back into the chair with a heavy sigh. Fine, you win. He practically spat the words. I'll instruct my lawyer to draft a new divorce settlement, something equitable. Saying the word seemed to pain him. Relief swept through me, though I kept my expression neutral. I'm glad we could settle this like adults, I extended my hand calmly. After a moment's hesitation, Ethan shook it, sucked his grip tight with resentment. Expect the revised paperwork soon, he bit out. Gathering the photos back into the folder, he strode toward the door without another glance at me. As soon as the door slammed shut behind him, my legs nearly gave out. I sank to the floor, dizzy with adrenaline and vindication. I'd stood my ground and emerged victorious. True, it was just one battle. The war still raged on. But I had taken definitive action to change the tides in my favor. For the first time in years, I felt empowered. In control of my future. I'd seized my power back rather than waiting helplessly for Ethan to dictate my fate and it felt incredible. I allowed myself a moment to feel the victory, sweet and exhilarating. Then I rinsed my face, straightened my spine, and walked to the phone. I had more calls to make. Arrangements to ensure the revised settlement delivered what it promised. Ethan would look for any loopholes, any way to manipulate the terms back in his favor. I would not, could not let down my guard. But as I began dialing, a sense of hope blossomed in my chest. Today I had faced my greatest fear— Confrontation with the domineering man I'd believed held all the cards, and I'd emerged the victor. If I could do that, I could weather whatever else came next. The divorce, rebuilding a new life with my kids, all of it, I was ready. Ethan had awoken a warrior within me, and she was just getting started. I scrutinized the revised divorce settlement one final time, searching in vain for any hidden traps or loopholes. Finding nothing amiss, I signed on the dotted line with a satisfied smile. The negotiator I'd hired had more than earned his exorbitant fees. Per our agreement, I would receive 60% of the marital assets. More than enough to secure a comfortable new home and fund the kids' college accounts. Ethan would also pay a hefty monthly stipend in child and spousal support. His reputation may have survived the divorce, but his bank account certainly wouldn't. Mom, the moving truck is here. Alex called from the foyer. I nodded, stealing myself one last time before heading downstairs. The kids waited by the front door, boxes piled around them. Lila bounced excitedly on her heels. I can't wait to decorate my new room, and we can finally get a dog like you promised. Despite everything, I smiled at her enthusiasm. At least one good thing had come from this nightmare. A fresh start somewhere Ethan Ethan's presence didn't haunt us daily. 
All right, let's get loaded up, I said briskly. I want to stop by the bank before heading to the new house. Alex gave me a quizzical look as he dragged boxes out front. The bank? Why? I lowered my voice, conscious of the movers hauling furniture nearby. There's something I need to take care of, for security. At the bank, I made my way straight to the office of the banker who'd helped me open my personal account weeks earlier. After quick pleasantries, I slid an envelope across the desk to him. I need to convert this to cash and deposit it into my new account. Today. The banker's eyebrows shot up at the thickness of the envelope, but he didn't question it. Of course, Miss Collins. I'll take care of this immediately. Within the hour, I had successfully funneled a sizable portion of the divorce settlement into untraceable cash. Not an excessive amount, just enough to fund the next phase of my plan. To build a new future safe from Ethan's clutches. Over the next several days, the chaos of moving fully occupied my thoughts. I explored the new neighborhood with the kids, let them excitedly decorate their rooms. At night, I sank gratefully into my own spacious bed, alone, and finally able to relax. Once we settled into a comfortable routine, I turned my focus to the promise I'd made myself, establishing financial independence. I still received monthly support payments, but I never again wanted to rely solely on a man's money not when he could so easily use it as a weapon against me. I thought back to my teaching days, memories flooded with warmth and purpose. Inspiration struck me as I drove by a vacant storefront near our new home, a perfect space for the endeavor taking shape in my mind. Several weeks later, I held a small open house to proudly unveil the new business, a children's enrichment center focused on creative arts and academic basics. I'd hired several bright, energetic teachers to handle daily lessons while I managed the business operations. On opening day, I paused to take in the rows of easels, sensory tables, and bookshelves filled with toys. The chalk menu listed dance, yoga, and drama classes. My eyes misted over. After sacrificing my own career, I was finally nurturing that same joy of learning in other children. Alex and Lila beamed as they led their friends on tours. My mom did all this herself, Lila announced. Watching them, I knew my late nights poring over business plans had been worth it. That evening, after closing shop for the day, I toasted my staff with the nice bottle of wine I'd been saving. Here's to new beginnings, I said proudly. Their resounding cheers filled me with hope. No matter what challenges arose next, I had reclaimed my independence and purpose. My happiness no longer hinged on someone else's whims. I still had difficult days, of course. Raising two teens solo wasn't easy, and I often missed adult companionship. But whenever I felt my resolve wavering, I remembered the hidden cash reserve, my emergency fund and insurance policy, guaranteeing security on my own terms, proof that I could stand tall and provide for my family, with or without anyone's help, hard-won freedom, the sweetest kind. I tapped my foot impatiently, watching the clock as I waited in the courthouse hallway. Any minute now— the judge would call us in to officially finalize the divorce. My lawyer, a stern woman aptly named Miss Wolf, laid a hand on my arm. It's almost over. Just stay calm in there. Easy for her to say. She hadn't dealt with Ethan's bullying for decades like I had. But she was right. I couldn't afford to seem too emotional or vindictive now. The door finally opened and a clerk called us in. I entered with my head held high, refusing to even glance at Ethan. Wolf had advised me to let her do the talking unless directly addressed by the judge. We stood as the judge took her seat. As she reviewed our paperwork, I subtly assessed the room. Ethan sat stone-faced beside his lawyer, fists clenched. His parents, who I hadn't seen in years, sat behind him looking dazed and confused by this whole messy situation. Very well, everything seems in order, the judge said briskly, shuffling the papers into a pile. Unless either party has any final concerns, I am ready to grant this divorce. Before I could even exhale in relief, Ethan's lawyer jumped to his feet. Your Honor, I must object. My client was coerced into an unfair settlement under duress from his wife. He agreed simply to avoid humiliating publicity, not because the terms are equitable. I gritted my teeth, fury boiling up instantly. Of course, Ethan would try one final manipulation tactic to wriggle out of his rightful obligations. Ms. Wolf rose calmly beside me. There is absolutely no evidence to support such an outrageous claim, Your Honor, she rebutted smoothly. 
my client simply demonstrated her legal right to expose the truth of their marriage breakdown, a breakdown caused solely by Mr. Collins's own deceitful actions. The judge peered down her glasses. Unless you have tangible proof of these coercion claims, I cannot simply override a mutually agreed-upon settlement. Ethan's lawyer spluttered indignantly, but sat back down. I shot Miss Wolfe a grateful look. Her confidence bolstered my own. Do you have anything to add, Mrs. Collins? The judge asked me directly. I stood tall. No, Your Honor. The settlement is fair and equitable. I only want to finalize this divorce so we can all move on with our lives. My voice rang through the silent courtroom. Behind Ethan, his mother dabbed at her eyes with a handkerchief. The judge nodded. Very well. It is the ruling of this court that the marriage be dissolved, and the settlement enacted as written. She banged her gavel decisively. Case closed. I sagged in relief as Ethan stormed out of the courtroom. It was over. I had endured the final gauntlet. Miss Wolfe clasped my hand tightly. You were phenomenal in there, she praised. Now go celebrate this new chapter. The kids were waiting eagerly by the car when I emerged from the courthouse, official divorce papers in hand. We shared a celebratory group hug right there in the parking lot. I'm so proud of you, Mom, Alex said, a catch in his voice. We both are. You really stood up to Dad's bullying. Lila nodded firmly. He tried to pull his same old crap, but not this time. You shut it down. I blinked back grateful tears. Having you two in my corner made all the difference. But this victory belongs to all of us. We picked up takeout and had an impromptu party at home, laughing together in a way we hadn't in years. I knew the pain and anger over Ethan's betrayal would take time to fully heal. But tonight we simply reveled in the triumph of breaking free. Later, after the kids went to bed, I pulled out the thick case file documenting Ethan's misdeeds. For a moment, I considered burning it, no longer needing the leverage it provided. But caution prevailed. Instead, I tucked the file safely in the back of my closet. A reminder that as much as Ethan had taken from me, I had reclaimed power over my own life in the end. The law was on my side now, our assets divided exactly as I'd fought for. But it never hurt to be overly prepared where Ethan was concerned. With that final reassurance in place, I slipped into bed feeling truly free for the first time in ages. The future stretched bright before me, filled with possibilities limited only by my own imagination. Ethan had meant to trap me in his web of lies. Instead, he had lit a fire in me to fight for myself and my children, and it was a fire that would never be extinguished again. I sipped my coffee leisurely, skimming the morning headlines, business as usual until a familiar name jumped out at me, Ethan's law firm, emblazoned above the fold. I snatched up the paper, pulse racing. CEO steps down amid scandal, the headline screamed. My eyes frantically scanned the article. The board of Bartley & Associates announced today the resignation of senior partner Ethan Collins following revelations of his involvement with a mistress. I gasped aloud, nearly spilling my drink. There in stark print were the words I'd never expected to see published. The whole sordid tale of Ethan's infidelity laid bare. Miss Carter's photos accompanied the article in garish detail, along with leaked financial records showing the extravagant gifts showered on Ethan's mistress. Gifts bought with funds diverted from family accounts without my knowledge. I sat stunned, emotions swirling wildly. Disbelief warred with vindication and a touch of fear. I certainly hadn't leaked anything to the media. After the exhausting divorce, I just wanted to move on with my life. Had Ethan crossed someone else who decided to expose him? I supposed it hardly mattered now. The truth was out, and Ethan would face the consequences. Still reeling, I bundled the kids off to school as usual, not wanting to alarm them. I knew they would hear the news from their friends soon enough. Best to let them process it first. All day I fielded shocked phone calls from family and acquaintances. Yes, the rumors were true. Ethan had been deceitful and unfaithful. No, I had not been the one to go public. I remained dignified but honest, refusing to sugarcoat Ethan's behavior. He had made his bed. Now he could lie in it. Alone. That evening, the kids came bursting through the front door, talking loudly over one another. I held up my hands for quiet. I know you both have a lot of emotions around this news. Let's talk it through. I guided them to sit on the couch. Their indignant faces told me everything. I can't believe all our friends know Dad cheated now. Alex shook his head angrily. So humiliating. 
Lila's eyes blazed. I'm glad everyone knows. He's slithered out of consequences for too long. She crossed her arms. Karma finally caught up. I nodded slowly. You're right. He has avoided accountability in the past. But the truth prevailing is not always a comfort. I chose my words carefully. Your father made many mistakes, ones that hurt this family deeply. Now he'll have to live with the results of his choices. That brings justice, but we don't need to celebrate his suffering. Alex's shoulders slumped. You're right, Mom. I don't want to enjoy anyone's misery, even his. I squeezed his shoulder. However complicated my own emotions, I refused to let the kids follow Ethan's example of bitterness and pettiness. We would take the high road. In the weeks that followed, Ethan maintained radio silence with me and the kids. From news articles and old acquaintances, I pieced together bits of his new reality. His reputation lay in tatters, prestige stripped away overnight. The country club revoked his membership. Most of his clients promptly fired the firm in the scandal's wake. Even the mistress dumped him, not wanting her name dragged through the mud further. Despite everything, a small part of me ached in sympathy. Ethan was certainly reaping what he sowed, but to lose everything so suddenly would devastate anyone. I hoped someday he found a way to rebuild his integrity, away from the temptations of power. I focused on my own fulfillment, through work and time with Lila and Alex. We grew closer than ever, strengthened by weathering the storm as a team. The Enrichment Center thrived with a long waiting list for spots. True to my word, I never exploited Ethan's downfall or gloried in his suffering, no matter how justified it might feel. I simply looked ahead to my bright future, built through determination and hard-won independence. Karma had already secured justice for me. Now my energy went toward living well. The ultimate revenge. We sold out of spots for summer camp in less than a week this year. I beamed, doing a little dance across my office. I had to hire two extra instructors just to accommodate the waiting list. Alex laughed indulgently as he plopped into the chair across from me. That's amazing, Mom, but try not to work yourself into the ground, okay? I waved his concern away. Oh, please, I have plenty of energy to go around. And it was true, running my childhood enrichment center filled me with renewed purpose every day. The business now supported my modest lifestyle completely, freeing me from reliance on anyone else. Two years after opening the doors, I finally felt wholly independent and fulfilled. My divorce lawyer walked through those same doors now, smiling broadly as she sank into the chair beside Alex. Cora, I come bearing good news. The court has approved the final order. Ethan will no longer receive any alimony payments from you. I gasped, hands flying to my mouth in shock. Then I leapt up to embrace her. Thank you so much. I can't tell you what a relief that is, she grinned. Happy to help force that stubborn man into accepting facts, your income now sufficiently provides for your household. He has no valid claim to your hard-earned money. After she left, Alex grabbed my shoulders, eyes shining with pride. You did it, Mom. You finally cut him off for good. I blinked back, grateful tears. We did it, you mean. I never could have gotten here without you by my side. Alex had matured into a thoughtful young man who often helped me manage the center's operations after school. While he would leave for college next year, he vowed to stay closely involved in the family business. Lila, too, found her calling, assisting with the younger kids' dance and acting classes on weekends. Watching my children thrive filled my heart to bursting. That pride sustained me as I put in long hours preparing for the summer camp season. By mid-June, the center bustled daily with the sounds of children learning and playing. Excuse me, Miss Collins? I turned to see a smartly dressed woman waiting by my office door. Yes, can I help you? My name is Jess. I work for Women's Voice magazine. She extended her hand, which I shook warily. What would a magazine want with me? Jess smiled, sensing my hesitation. I apologize for the intrusion, but I'd love to speak with you about featuring your business. Your story is really inspiring for other women. I flushed, surprised and flattered. Still, memories of the divorce coverage made me guarded about press. Sensing this, Jess nodded kindly. No pressure, but please do consider it. I'll leave my card. After she left, I stared down at the card, turning the idea over in my mind. It would be nice to highlight the center's successes. But did I really want to rehash the painful past so publicly again? That evening, I discussed it with the kids. 
Lila, ever the drama queen, immediately adored the idea. Are you kidding? This could be great publicity for the center, Mom, and just imagine seeing your face on magazine racks. Alex nodded thoughtfully. I get why you're hesitant. I get why you're hesitant. But you have nothing to hide. Maybe sharing your story could help other women in similar situations. I say go for it. Their enthusiasm was contagious. This was a chance to move beyond the victim narrative and fully own my empowerment story. To inspire women facing adversity. What did I have to lose? I invited Jess back the following week for a formal interview. We chatted over coffee in my office about my teaching background, opening the center, and yes, dissolving an unhealthy marriage to start fresh. You're so open and brave, Jess marveled, shutting off her recorder. Your strength will really resonate with readers. I blushed. It wasn't easy, believe me, but focusing on the kids helped me power through the difficult times. They gave me purpose. Jess's eyes shone. What an amazing support system. Is there any final message you'd like to share with others in your situation? I pondered it then said resolutely, You are stronger than you know. Don't let anyone undermine your worth or make you feel trapped. Keep sight of what matters most and fight for that fiercely. Jess squeezed my hand before departing. I exhaled slowly, drained but proud. The story was out there now, messy parts and all. Hopefully it could help shift someone else's perspective or inspire action, just as Alex said. A few weeks later, a thick package with my name on the return address arrived. I opened it to find the upcoming issue of Women's Voice. There on the glossy cover beamed my smiling face above the headline, Cora Collins Turns Adversity Into Inspiration. Tears of pride sprang to my eyes as I clutched the magazine tightly. Whatever came next, I had reclaimed my strength, my voice, and my power. On my own terms.